Hello everybody, I'm Alexei Krabarov, the organizer of the new SF Spark and Friends Meetup. And today we have our inaugural meetup at Galvanize, a great data science place. And with us we have the three co-founders of the open source project Apache Flink. Uh, a lot of folks interested in data streaming, big data space, heard about it. We have not seen these guys here yet, so this is a momentous occasion when we have all of them with us here. And I'll just let them introduce themselves and uh, maybe say a few words, you know, uh, about themselves. Uh, welcome. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. So I'm Kostas. Uh, I am together with Stefan and Robert, um, part of the original team that uh, created Flink, uh, initially out of a university research project, uh, took it out to the Apache Software Foundation, Apache Incubator, uh, Apache Top Level Project. Hi, thank you for the invitation. Um, my name is Robert. Um, I'm a software engineer at uh, Data Artisans. I'm a committer at the Apache Flink project. Um, yeah, and I've, I'm working on various uh, components of the Flink system, for example, the YARN integration, the APIs, um, and a lot of things that users uh, are in touch with every day when they're using Flink. Yeah. Hi, I'm Stefan. I'm, like Costa, one of the um, people from the University Research Project. Um, Flink was, uh, or what became Flink was, uh, was a big part of, um, of what I, I wrote my PhD about. And yeah, and after that, um, we, we took it open source into Apache and are now, and I'm actually happy to see that people, that people like, like the stuff and are picking it up. Thank you. So uh, basically, uh, I will just ask you know, a few general questions, right? So the, uh, uh, the Spark and Friends audience mostly now knows about Spark, right? So there is Spark Summit happening in town. A lot of folks are walking from there. Uh, I think Spark streaming is one of the very interesting pieces of Spark uh, we've seen deployed more and more in production. Uh, there is a lot of different other streaming systems, notably, of course, Storm, which started kind of the streaming uh, revolution. Uh, Kafka now has Samza. Uh, so I wonder, you know, uh, what is kind of the uh, evolution of your system? How did you guys think about it in a few words? And I know that streaming is a very important piece of this in kind of uh, what made you interested in streaming? How do you see your like spot in the sun compared to all of these guys? Sure. So the basic premise of Flink uh, is to see uh, data analytics as streaming first. Mm -hmm. uh, so the basic premise of the system is to do both bots and streaming analytics on top of a streaming engine, mm -hmm. uh, which is yeah the main differentiator behind a few other projects. Uh, in particular, it is a pure streaming engine. It can do pure streaming, but it can also support uh, bots processing on top of streaming. So uh, for Flink, bots is really uh, a special case for streaming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and um, in the in the pure streaming space, we see actually that. That Flink feels feels a bit of a, a sweet spot where where you can combine low latency with uh, with very strong guarantees exactly once, including um, user defined state, and um, and still get good very good throughput with that. So this is sort of a sweet spot combination of features that um, that other systems have um, have sort of uh, mapped out. Nice. Uh, so. Basically, where I mean, it's it's very interesting because you know not every day a system like this kind of suddenly appears, right? And obviously, a lot of you know Adam, for instance, knows about Flink and some other folks, but a majority of people, for instance, using Spark, are not aware of Flink yet. And but if you look at the stack, it's it's it's, it's really full. Like there is a lot of you have a machine learning library, you have a graph library, right? You have a lot of different components. So, I mean, where have you guys been? Like, how did all this happen? W was it mostly a European project, you know, to you Berlin? Uh, what is kind of the, how do you, like, how do you uh, kind of uh, move it from Europe to the Bay Area awareness space? What is kind of, what's the history there? Give me like a few facts. Sure. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's true. So the, the, the origins uh, of the project uh, are in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, originally in Berlin. Uh, other European institutions getting involved later, but um, I really like to think of, of the project as an international project. So mm -hmm. we have, you know, a lot of committers uh, and contributors both in the U.S., uh, Europe, and Asia. So mm -hmm. it would be wrong for them uh, to sort of label this as a European project. So I'm sort of against that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, sorry. What was the, the second part of your question? Yeah. So what uh, what is the kind of uh, 
Uh, right, right, yeah, like, yeah. like how it how it yeah. evolved, like kind of how it burst onto the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, two drivers, I would say. The first is that we had an engine uh, that was powerful enough uh, to power a bunch of different applications mm -hmm. and power them <clears throat> with very good performance, including gra including graphs, machine learning, um, streaming, and bots, and so on. Uh, so that was one driver. The second driver is that this is really organic growth uh, with the community growing and diversifying. Uh, lots of contributors coming in with different backgrounds, interested in different kinds of analytics and contributing back uh, to the project. Okay. It's, it's maybe interesting to add that like the origins of the project that became Fling, it was called Stratosphere before, mm -hmm. are actually quite a few years back. So this this project started in, in late 2009, actually. Mm -hmm. So we've been, been working on this at the university for quite a few years. We, it was always open source, but because we never sort of w went out and spread the word, basically mm -hmm. no, nobody knew about it. But we, we spent quite a bit of time laying, I think, the foundations of, uh, of, of the stream processor. So after after we decided to put it out open source and, and grow it, we had a yeah we had a, a very very strong foundation to grow it stack fast. This is very interesting because it reminds me of another university, UC Berkeley and MLab, right? Like it's kind of it's it uh, resembles mm -hmm. that trajectory, and I think they started around the same time. Uh, so that's uncanny. That's that's very interesting. So if you know if uh, probably I would do the meetups in 2012 in Berlin, maybe I would have come across you. But I was doing it here, so I met Matei, right? And we started, you know, talking about Spark then. Um, so tell tell me about your programming stack. You chose the programming languages. How you know, like, what's your favorite technologies for Flink? Uh, oof, yeah, there's there's a lot. Um, let let me try and, uh, and and sum it up. Okay, um, a bit of a difference between um, between Flink and Spark is that the core of Flink is Java mm -hmm. and the APIs on top are Scala, whereas mm -hmm. uh, in and Spark's I think the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, in inside Flink, we use a, a com combination of uh, techniques. We use um, we, we've cooked up quite a bit ourselves. For example, um, memory management, serialization framework, and so on, because we had very very special requirements for that. Um, we're we're using um, also other other popular li libraries like Akka for distributed coordination. Yes. Um, then a lot of the Hadoop um, stuff for deployment and yeah. Also. Yeah, Are exactly. Are you using Akka with Java? Are we using um, partly with Java and partly with because with it's another Scala. version. It's called inside and Java outside, and then there is yeah, Java yeah. inside and Scala outside. So there is all kinds of uh, combinations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually <laughs> right. The the parts where we're using Akka actually interweave Scala and Java right. uh, very seamlessly. Yeah. Yeah, but since I run of Scala, I want to kind of see the bigger ratio of Scala inside. But I would take Scala APIs any day, right? Like as long as it works fine, uh, right? Like is it Java inside my power to it, right? Like if I can use it from the REPL and I can play with this. Yeah, yeah, you, tot you totally can. So you're you're in touch with the programming language you like. Yes. And, um, well, yeah. this is this is great. <coughs> yeah. So below this, um, like streamed pipeline engine, uh, pipeline uh, streaming engine, we have also different deployment options. For example, yarn deployment, um, bare metal direct installation on the cluster. But you can also run Flink immediately um, inside your IDE, debug it locally. Mm -hmm. um, we have an option for running it on TES as well for mm -hmm. fine-grained um, resource isolation, so you get elasticity in Yarn. Um, so there's a wide uh, array of, of uh, opportunities to try out Flink. Um, yeah, and we also have um, contributions, uh, external contributions. Um, for libraries on top of these APIs. So we have, for example, a machine learning library and a graph processing library um, on top of the um, APIs, um, but also external pro uh, projects like cascading and Google Dataflow, which you can use uh, with Flink. Let's see. So uh, I would kind of uh, end with two questions. So first is, uh, your open source project, uh, and we're meeting a bunch of developers, right? We have hundreds of developers, uh, already, you know, 400 of developers in the SF Spark meetup, you know, 2,700 developers in the SF Scala meetup, uh, and uh, some of the biggest uh, data communities uh, in the world here. What do you want uh, for the open source developers interested in Flink to help you with? You know, where do you need them to jump in uh, and contribute to this open source project? Yeah. Um, I think the 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 nicest part to start contributing is probably with the libraries. They they are the let's say the easiest to get into, and they're also the ones where where you need the most user feedback because ultimately libraries as good as it meets 
exactly the requirements that the people use have. Cases. And yeah, yeah, the use cases. Mm -hmm. And I mean, their feedback on the use cases is one of the, of the what most What should they use it for? Things. Like, give an example, what can they try it, like, to do? Should we, like, can we process tweets with them? Incoming yeah, yeah. data, sensor data. Yeah, 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 totally. So there's there's a there's a bunch of connectors, for example, to different to different sources: uh, Kafka, RabbitMQ, Twitter, Hostbird, um, client, and and so on. Uh, HBase on, yeah. Try, try those out. Uh, see how they how they work work mm -hmm. for you, and 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 help us add the tooling around those to um, to make them work seamless for for use case. I think that is the that's probably the the most valuable part. Okay. Uh, uh, and the final question will be, you know, we're, you're at the beginning of a wild ride, right? Like, if you look what happens with Spark, you know, I think we have a lot of ingredients similar to this, right? And kind of my feeling is the Bay Ready is ready for this. And, you know, there is uh, something interesting that's going to happen here. So let's make a prediction, right? One year away from now, where Data Artisan is, where Flink is, what's happening? Mm -hmm. Give me some predictions, some ideas. Yeah, so, so <clears throat> I think you're right. I think you're, we're exactly on the point where lots of people are trying it out, lots of people are sending feedback, uh, lots of you know, people are starting to use it in production, stress out the system, so I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm personally very excited about the data streaming space. I think this is going to become increasingly important in the future and we're going to see uh, more and more use cases uh, from that space. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and I hope that this will uh, sort of validate uh, architectural choices uh, to provide uh, a good stream processor uh, for people to use. Great. So I hope you know uh, it really takes uh, on, and uh, we see a lot of interesting things coming from Avash Flink. And certainly, we'll be happy to have you guys over at SF Spark and Friends. Mm -hmm. I know you have your own meetup, uh, Apache Flink, tomorrow, uh, and uh, definitely we'll be following that as well. Uh, so, you know, welcome and we're looking forward to your talk. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks for having us.